Hi everyone, it's Paul here from Mantra Systems. Just a quick video on the best way to work with Annex 8 of the MDR, which is the annex that contains the classification rules for understanding which risk class your device will fall into. Um, so you can see on screen, this is the annex itself as presented in the PDF version of the MDR. It starts on page 140. Uh, it's split into three chapters. The first chapter contains some useful definitions, which are worth reading through, and um, you can do that off, off camera, um, and then some rules about how to implement these in practice. But the focus of this video is on chapter three, which contains the actual classification rules themselves. And the best way to work with this section is to adopt a step-by-step -step approach and to try and exclude as many sections as possible based on the initial stem. So it's quite logically constructed and I suppose the best way to go through this would be to use an example device. So if we pick a cardiac pacemaker as an example then it illustrates how best to work with the annex. Um, so if you look at the first part of chapter three you can see it contains part four non-invasive devices. So all of the rules underneath part four relate to non-invasive devices, which is not relevant to a cardiac pacemaker, which of course is a surgically invasive device. So we can skip straight over all of the rules under heading four. So that's rule one, two, three, and four. Um, and then we move to Part five, which is uh, about invasive devices. So we're in the right section now. So we need to look in detail at the rules in this section. Rule five states, or well, begins with a stem sentence, all invasive devices with respect to body orifices other than surgically invasive devices. So we can stop reading there because a cardiac pacemaker is a surgically invasive device. We can move on to rule six. This begins with all surgically invasive devices, so it sounds relevant so far, intended for transient use. A pacemaker is not intended for transient use, it's permanently implanted. So again, rule six can be disregarded on that basis. Move to rule seven. All surgically invasive devices intended for short-term use. Once again, a pacemaker is not for short-term use, so we can disregard rule seven. And move on to rule eight. All implantable devices and long-term surgically invasive devices are classified as class 2B unless. So we're in the correct section here, implantable and long-term surgically invasive devices. That's what a pacemaker is. So the default position is that it's class 2B unless one of the exceptions in the following list applies. Now this list is referred to as indents, and we need to look at each indent in turn to see if we have an exception. So indent one, uh, unless they are intended to be placed in the teeth, well that obviously doesn't apply to a cardiac pacemaker. Indent two, unless they are intended to be used in direct contact with the heart, central circulatory system or central nervous system. Now of course a cardiac pacemaker is used in direct contact with the heart and central circulatory system. So this exception does apply and on this basis a cardiac pacemaker will be classified as class three. So Best practice is to, even when you have a fairly confident classification as we do in this case, best practice is to carry on through the remainder of the annex to see if any of the other rules apply. And particularly relevant is the final section beginning with rule 14, which is classified as special rules. Now these are um, important generally, but especially so if you have anything other than a class three device, because these special rules paper over the cracks that are left by the other classification rules, and on several occasions will upgrade the classification of a particular product. So always check these special rules to see if any of them apply. But fundamentally, that's how to work with Annex 8. Adopt a step-by-step -step approach, try and exclude as many sections as you reasonably can. That will help you hone in on the part that's most relevant to the device in question. So I hope you found this video useful and uh, we'll see you in the next video. Thank you.